Hello and welcome to my Drawing for Beginners course where I teach you how to draw in bite-sized lessons. In this lesson we're talking about the other equipment you need for pencil drawing. In previous classes we've already discussed pencils and we've discussed graphite dust. If you haven't watched them yet I'll leave a link over here for you and you can go and catch them there. For now let's start off and take a look. What else do we need for pencil drawing? So we obviously need something to draw on. And you go to your art shop you'll see that there are tons of different options that you get and it can be quite overwhelming in the beginning. So in this class I'm just going to show you the basics that you need to know about the paper. We'll go into that in a bit more detail in a separate video which I'll link to over here. The main thing that you need to know about drawing papers is that they come in different thicknesses and different textures and different colors. Then you also just need to know that they are manufactured differently. There are several ways that the guys manufacture papers for printing on, for drawing on, for doing watercolor work on, and so on. So let's start off with the manufacturing process. The manufacturing process that you'd initially want is cartridge paper. And it won't always say cartridge paper. If it says sketch pad on the book, then you can assume that it's cartridge paper. And as you can see, they come in different shapes and sizes. So if you take a look at, let's just get to an empty page, at these different papers, they're also different colors because they use bleach to make the colors of the paper lighter or darker. Let's get to so this guy over here as well. You can see each one is different. So when buying yourself a sketch pad, just take a look and see how white is the paper and if that's if that's what you want. You can even get toned paper like this that, that you can use for different effects, which is quite nice. So what thickness paper you buy is going to depend on the type of drawing you're going to do. You want at least an 80 GSM or a 60 pound paper, nothing less than that. Anything less than that, it can't handle the pressure of drawing dark tonal values, because when you're drawing dark tonal values, you have to press quite hard. In the ideal world, I like to use a 100 pound or a 160 GSM paper, so that's that's great. Either of those two is good. If you go for the thicker ones, then you'll be able to do different techniques like indentation and so on as well. So also realize that with the different textures that you get. So here I've got a watercolor pad and here's some smooth cartridge paper. So I can show you the difference between the two. So you can see this one has been bleached more than that one because this one's got a bit of a, a yellow tonal value to it. So let's just grab a pencil. And now this is your a textured paper. So can you see it's got that bit of a grain to it. So what happens is that grain is called tooth. And this one here is a smooth paper. You can see it's a lot finer tooth. So a tooth is essentially, if you look at your paper from the side, under a microscope, it's not smooth, it looks like this. It's got little humps and bumps. Let's draw that a bit bigger. It's little humps and bumps like this. So when you're drawing with your pencil, you're just sort of adding some graphite onto those little tips over there, like that. And then when you press really hard, then you're squishing the, the graphite into that valley over there. And you're filling up more of that. That's if I press hard like this. So now I'm, I'm essentially flattening down that tooth over there. And I'm making it flat. When you're just pressing soft, all you do is you're adding just graphite onto those tips. So you have to realize that the, the different type of textures that you get is going to give you a different effect on your drawing, which is not a bad thing. Drawing like this it can be great. It gives you a nice little texture and it gives you a, a, a lovely artistic kind of feel to it. Where this over here with a smoother texture gives you a lot more 
finer shadings. So if you're looking for a, a really fine shading artwork, drawing, then you go for the smooth papers. If you want something with a bit more arty look to it, then you go for the more textured paper. For now, I suggest you just get yourself a, just a general sketch pad with nice smooth paper. What I often draw on is just plain old photocopy paper, just like this. It's, it's 80 GSM, so it's, it's the good thickness, and you get beautiful smooth shadings on it. What you do want to look out for is that you need your paper to be archival if you're going to be selling your artwork. So just photocopy paper isn't ideal for for that because it's not acid free. So the drawing papers that you buy, make sure that they are acid free if you're going to be selling your artworks because that makes the, the artwork last a lot longer. All right, so the next thing that we need to look at are erasers. So again, you get different types of erasers. The first eraser that you want for drawing is a soft eraser. So you'll see that it's quite quite bendy like this. So don't buy those pink school erasers and so on that are that are hard. It's got to be a nice soft drawing eraser. Erasing with that will now not damage the tooth of your paper where the other ones will. So you do get them in different colors and stuff. As long as it says soft eraser then then you'll be fine. And that's great for just general erasing. Then you get something else called a kneaded eraser which looks like that. So the kneaded eraser is pliable. And it looks like this. So you can you can bend him into and, and mold him into different shapes. If you want to just erase little samples like that, or if you want to erase like large areas, and you can make him rounder and so on. So what's nice about these guys is they last for years because when they get dirty, you just clean them like this. You just pull them like that. And you'll see, I've specifically left this one dirty so you can see, look there. So all the graphite that's on it just gets blended in and you end up with a nice clean eraser again. The next type of er eraser you get is called a, a pencil or a pen shaped eraser. And they look like that. Or literally pencil shaped like that. So the one that I recommend you get is the it's called a Tombow Mono Zero eraser. So it literally works like a, a mechanical pencil. So it's got a long tip like that. What's nice, you can also just shave him off at different angles to get nice, super sharp. This guy is also nice for, for general work, but he does tend to blunt off quite quickly. So you can't use him for as fine erasing work as you can for that. The next type of eraser you get is an electric eraser. So it does come with different points like this and it's bi battery operated. It's not very accurate. So I don't use mine too often, but when I do, you can get some lovely effects. You can see how I've used it in this drawing over here to get this beautiful texture in the field, indicating grasses and flowers and stuff. Next up are brushes. When we discussed the graphite dust, I did show you this mob brush over here. It's great for flicking off loose graphite dust or the crumbs from your eraser and very, very gentle blendings on your drawing as well. So you can get this at the art store or you can get it at your makeup department, even at the dollar store. It's super, super soft. For more rougher blendings, you can just get yourself also at the dollar store just some bristle brushes. They're nice for just doing small little blends in little finer areas like this. And, and they don't do hard blendings, just small little tonal value adjustments. It's great for that. Then speaking of blenders, you also get paper blenders like this, which are really nice for blending into finer areas than what the, the brush can do. What I do is I make my own blenders, which look like this which you can make into different shapes and tips. So in a separate video, I'll show you how to do that. I'll link to that over here. Then you can also use other things like just cotton buds. 
They're great for doing little blending work as well. And they're dirt cheap. In the pencil class, we did discuss knives and sharpness. I won't go into that one again. But just be aware that you need those guys. You would also need a ruler. Rulers are handy for all sorts of construction work and marking off and so on. I also use masking tape. So the masking tape I use is a low tack masking tape. So you'll notice that this one I've got here is green. So you'll find that in general the green masking tapes are the low tack and the yellow ones are the more sticky ones. You don't want the masking tape to rip your paper. So the low tack masking tape, you can apply that and stick your papers down onto the table if you're drawing or mask off little areas and so on. But remove that masking tape again without damaging your paper. So low tack masking tape. The next thing that I use are scribes. And here are some of the scribes that I use. This one is just a standard punch which you can buy at your hardware store. This one is called a ball stylus. The guys use that in pottery, so any craft shop should be able to supply you with that. This one here is a standard mechanical pencil, but instead of putting a lead inside, I've put a pin inside, and that gives me really fine markings. You would use these on thicker paper, like this. So what you do is you literally scratch into the paper. So I'll do the scribe, I'll do a thick ball stylus, do the thin ball stylus and I'll do the pin. Now because there's an indentation in the paper, when you're shading like this, your pencil doesn't get into that mark that you've now engraved into the paper. So that's a really handy technique to have if you're looking for fine detail, for example, the whiskers of, of an animal. Next up, I use a gel pen. And these ones are the Jelly Roll brand. So they come in different thicknesses. There's a 1.8 and a 0.5 of a millimeter, which is great for adding just final little highlights and detail work onto drawings. You can see in this drawing how I've used it for the whiskers and a few little highlights here and there on the drawing. And that's great for when you can't erase such a thin little line. Then the gel pen comes in quite handy. Next up, you're going to need some tracing paper. So we don't draw on the tracing paper or anything like that. We use that to protect our drawings while we're drawing. Let's bring in the drawing over there. So let's say you've drawn this area over here and now you want to draw over there. So you can't put your hand over here because you'll smudge this part of the drawing. So that's what the tracing paper is for. So you can lay that over there and you can draw over here. And now this is protected, but because the tracing paper is clear, you can still see through there. And that helps you still be able to judge your tonal values and all those kinds of things while you're drawing. So you can either use tracing paper and you can also use transparency as well. So the big thing when you do use transparency is a tracing paper to protect your drawing. Just don't slide this over the drawing like this because it can smudge what's underneath. Grab it from here and pick it up and put it in his new place. Pick him up, put him down in his new place and so on. And that way you're not going to smudge or hurt your drawing while drawing. Then last but not least, you can get yourself a nice carry case which will keep all your pencils in it. And this is fabulous if you like to go and sketching outdoors because he's got a place to hold all your pencils. So you slide them in here, like that. There's a place for your eraser, your knife, sharpener, and so on. At the end of the day, you just fold him up. And if you, you can even get yourself a small little sketch pad that will fit on the inside, like that. And there you go. You can go and sketching anywhere at any time. You can keep that in the glove compartment in your car. And you're ready to go. Now that you know what equipment we use for pencil drawing, let's go ahead and learn how to use our pencils. So for that, I'm going to show you how the tonal chart works because that's a critical component of drawing. I'm going to leave a link to that right here and in the description of the class. 
Then of course, don't forget to like and subscribe so that I can inform you when I add new lessons to the course. And if you want to go and take a look at my drawing and painting classes on my website, I've left a link for you on the screen. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next class.